So welcome to the Voktok Cafe. Uh, my name is Robin. Uh, I'm working with Proceed and I'm one of the hosts of the Voktok Cafe. Mark, you want to just introduce yourself quickly? Of course. Hi, everybody. My name is Mark Vizina. I'm a integration of technology consultant with the RECI4 vocational training, and I'll get to tell you a bit more about it uh, later. And so welcome everyone. So before we start, just so you know, on the um, Apricot website, there all, all the collaborative resources and documents are available. So you can see here that we have the recordings and the summaries and the archive are all available in the tiles. And that's all thanks to Richard who takes care of doing that for us. We have the calendar as well, where you can go see the what Voktok cafes are coming up and what the theme is. If you would like to access the collaborative document where we have the agenda and the minutes and the summary, you can click right there. And at the bottom, we have the resources that are shared during the meeting. So any of the links that we're going to share they're all available there okay. okay so a word about this this is a pilot project um your implication and your suggestions are hugely important so definitely speak up uh everything you every suggestion you have to say is, is really worth us is worth saying and it's worth us hearing it so please be a part of this project so today, on October 2nd, we are talking about, uh, in the healthcare sector, we're talking about the power of triangulation. And today we have a special guest with us. We have Kelly Ryan, who's a pedagogical consultant dealing with both the VT and the AGE sectors at New Frontier School Board. And she's going to present some of her findings. Today's goals. We want to identify the key concepts of triangulation in education. We want to compare and contrast these concepts as found in the healthcare systems. And we want to discuss our perceptions about this approach in teaching healthcare programs. So the way the session works, the session is broken down into two parts. We have the first 15 minutes is where we're going to present the topic and we're going to discuss some of the key points in the topic. Then, and this part is recorded. Then the second part is we have the, the discussion part afterwards where we're all, we ask for everyone's participation and we're having a conversation about the theme topic. And this part is not recorded. We also have the open mic discussions where if you have any questions that you wanna bring up that could be related to the topic or not. And then at the end, we go back to sort of the presentation mode and we have the technology and teaching inspiration cap, capsule that is also recorded. Let's go ahead and get started. So hi, I'm Kelly. I'm from New Frontiers School Board. I'm the PED consultant, um, as Robin said, for academic and VT. So I cover a lot, uh, a lot of programs. Um, so not so long ago, I love this, not so long ago in an age sector, not so far away, um, I was involved in a project. So I'm, I'm part of a provincial committee of PED consultants. Uh, Sonia used to be part of this committee as well. So our mandate was to support all of the academic teachers in the province. And one of the projects that we worked on a few years ago was on formative assessment, and um, which, which led us to look at um, triangulation. So I know that that's a really strange term perhaps, but um, we're, we're gonna look a little bit at what that looked like in the academic sector. And then we're gonna sort of see how it can transfer over into the V onto the um, VT side. So Robin, if you could switch slides. This is a video that we put together. Um, I think it's Tracy Rosen, Abby Spector and Gail Gagne. We want to look more deeply into gathering evidence of learning, and triangulation is the model we're exploring. So what exactly is triangulation? It involves gathering evidence of student learning over time from three different sources, observation, conversation, and product. We can then compare these different samples of evidence to each other to get as accurate a picture as possible of student learning. We're looking at conversations that people have in the classroom, and the conversations could be teacher, students, students with each other. Looking at learning through three different ways, right? So if we're having conversations, it's not just having a, a chat with our students, but it's important that we record the results of this so that we know that, okay, I'm assessing something now through our conversation. Do you mean recording them on a computer or recording what they're doing? Maybe you can elaborate on that. I think it would depend on the context. Let's say they're doing interviews in an English class. I might record it with video so that I have that 
Um, evidence. I have that evidence. Or as they're talking to each other and as they're interviewing, I might have a checklist and I'm just recording. Had great body language, um, was not mumbling, used correct sentence structure, etc. So it could be through video, but it could also just be through checklists or anecdotal comments, you know, next to their names in a, in a marking book. Observations? For observations, students are busy working on something. You know, they're working on a project and I'm walking around maybe with a checklist or something like that so that I have a record of it. And products. And the product. Product is important. You know, quizzes, projects, different things that they are creating. But I think that idea of, could this be something that we give for homework? What do you think about that? Is it fair to assess something that's being given for homework? My gut feeling is that no, because you're not really there to observe them as they're doing that homework. So it wouldn't really be a fair assessment. You're only seeing one piece of the puzzle. And it's interesting that you're talking about fairness, because I really believe that fairness is at the heart of triangulating. I mean, we're able to observe students by paying attention to conversations, nurturing those conversations because of the work that we're providing in the classroom by having people able to produce different products that show evidence of their learning. Each student has the opportunity to be evaluated in a way that is fair to them. It's the differentiation that is developed as a result of incorporating this into a teaching and learning practice. Would you make things really transparent to the students in terms of the observations, conversations, and products so that they're aware of the process too? The student is part of this process. So transparency is key. Yeah, and I think it's only fair. Like it's good practice or it's just nice to let people know, by the way, what you're doing right now, I am recording. This is the checklist that I will be using as you are doing this activity. <laughs> and they may have helped create that checklist. Yes, yeah. yeah. One thing that's really kind of bugging me a bit is it seems like it's almost overwhelming. Am I supposed to do this all at the same time? It seems like it's a lot of work for the students and the teachers. I think the answer is less that you're doing it all the time, but that it's a process that's happening over time. We're not constantly, you know, evaluating the same thing by talking about it and looking at it and, and assessing a final product, but that I'm aware that over time, I'm not only assessing in one way. I'm not always giving quizzes and I'm not always only having conversations. It makes me think of that parable, you know, of the elephant and the blind man. You know, there were blind men that were standing around an elephant and they were each asked to say, like, what is this that, that you're standing next to? And one of them was feeling only the, the tail. And so he said it was a rope. And another person was only feeling the, the trunk. So he said it was a hose. Because they were only looking, um, you know, figuratively speaking, at one part of it, they weren't able to really figure out what the whole thing was. Pretty much the same as when we're in our classrooms. If we're able to look at the different elements, if over time, I'm assessing through a quiz, interviews, and then maybe another quiz, and creating posters, and using a Google Slides, a collaborative activity of some sort. Then I'm able to, if we go back to our parable of the elephant, put all the pieces of the elephant together to come up with the elephant. So to summarize, so instead of saying, all right, I'm just going to be looking at product all the time and quizzing them, you're really going to mix it up. And with that, you'll get a more complete picture. And that really answers my question. You're not doing it all at once. It's over time. That's right. It is over time, but you're beginning with the end in mind. So you have a plan and everyone is part of the contract. It's a learning contract that really exists between students and teachers. Yes. Interesting. So you're really doing it together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's what I would say. Um, I mean, if you think about it, talking, looking, creating, it's a very collaborative process to get a good handle on what it is students know and understand and can do. One of the reasons also that we're, you know, we're assessing in different ways is so that we can compare these things against each other. So that, let's say I do, I give a quiz and everybody gets a certain mark on a quiz, that I'm able to then compare that mark to the results of the conversation assessment or the results of an observation assessment to see if, am I really getting the full picture? Am I really seeing the elephant in the room? Yeah. And when we get that clearer picture, we're able to adjust our teaching accordingly. Some of the key concepts that came out of that video are that evaluating the evidence of learning. And evidence is the key in all of that. So when we're looking at triangulation, it's really about the evidence and the proof when it comes to evaluating. So in triangulation, we're looking at the three different sources, conversation. So that's conversation, teacher to student, student to student, and sometimes teacher to teacher. 
It's about recordings and it's about which are observations and then products. It's about the complete picture. So they made reference to uh, in the video that we can't just rely on these individual components as standalones, that we need to look at them as a complete picture altogether because they feed each other and that it's a very collaborative and transparent process. So students are entitled to know what and how they're being evaluated. So by using triangulation, um, it becomes a more fair and equitable um, area for the students. So fairness is a core principle and it's planned and spread out over time. It's not a one-shot deal. It's not just looking at that end product, but it's that looking at all the pieces over a period of time. All right, so what do these three sources look like in VT? Well, conversations, like I was saying, teacher and student, and then student and student. Sometimes you might overhear a conversation that two students are having with each other that indicates to you that a student clearly understood a process or understood the content by their explanation to another student. And so you would record that or keep track of that somehow. So conversations are student to student, teacher to student. When a student is struggling with maybe moving a patient, so if we're looking at healthcare, so a student struggling moving a patient, you talk to them about the sticky part of the why and what, what was going on during that process. Um, class discussions about applying knowledge, case studies and projects. We're looking at observations. Teachers are observing the student while they perform the task. They're, they might be setting up a workstation or interacting with a patient, maybe performing a task. And while that's going on, the student, the teacher rather, is making observations and keeping some kind of anecdotal uh, running record, or perhaps it's a, they're using a rubric or a checklist, but it's, it's more, a, it's a purposeful observation. And then the third piece or component is the product or the end result. So whether that's the bandage being changed properly, the patient washed or fed, the medical procedure completed, or even the chart accurately filled out. These are the kinds of things that we're looking at when we're thinking about healthcare and triangulation. So triangulation, one part, one component of that triangle is the learner's product. And in VT, that's really what we're always focused on. We're always focused on the end task or the product, the finished product. Sometimes we forget about the process. Um, the thing is, is that that can't stand alone, as we've said. We also have to think about the teacher observations. So if we're looking at evidence, the end product alone is not is is not uh, is not what we need. We need to have teacher observation. We need to have conversations, and we need to have the product all working together. They have to be working in tandem. So alone is not good. Together is what we're looking for. Oh yeah. Mm, okay. <laughs> so why the triangle? <laughs> so in architecture, triangles are considered a very strong and stable form because force is equally spread through all sides. And so that's why we use triangulation when we talk about gathering evidence of learning. Is it just an education concept? Absolutely not. But what does that look like in our healthcare system? Well, it's the same concept as triangulation. So instead of teacher and student, you think about practitioner and patient and the conversations that happen between the practitioner and the patient. There has to be open dialogue. Patients are entitled to know um, what, what their medical records contain. And so they have to have those open conversations with the practitioner. The, the goal is quality care. So practitioner patient conversations feed into the medical care or the product or the end. So if it's, if it's again, if it's a bandage that needs to be changed properly, the patient needs to talk to the practitioner about, ouch, you know, that's hurting when you do that to me. There's got to be that kind of um, feedback given so that the medical care can happen properly. So it's not just at the end that we're looking at that Band-Aid being placed properly, but it's about the conversations that were had. It's about making sure that the observation checklists or charting, I guess in healthcare, we would refer to it as charting, but all of those key pieces work in tandem together. 
the key concepts. So evaluating the evidence of learning, that's what it looks like in education, but in healthcare, it's ensuring quality care. Sorry. <laughs> in the on the education side, when we think of triangulation, we look at the three different sources, conversations, recordings, and product, and the same thing happens in healthcare. Okay, we have those same three kinds of conversations. The complete picture works on education side and it works in healthcare as well. Collaborative and transparent on both sides. With the teacher and the student, things have to be open and transparent. And with the practitioner and the patient, the same thing has to happen. Fairness is a core principle with the student, making sure everything is equitable. And then on the healthcare side, patient wellness and advocacy is also a core principle. On the education side, we look at plan and spread out over time. And that is already built into the system in healthcare. Things happen progressively and over time. And the key takeaways, triangulation is about ensuring a complete picture of the situation for everybody involved. It uses three different sources, three different types of evidence, and core values are differentiation, collaboration, and transparency. But thank you so much, Kelly, for presenting that. So at this point, what we do is we stop the recording, and now we're going to have a discussion about some of this. So let's go ahead. You want to go ahead and do the technology and teaching inspiration, Mark? I wanted to bring up some tools that could support triangulation, in that support the teachers in their effort for triangulation. They can look at the slide, uh, but basically they could use the, their camera on their devices, forms, uh, have the conversation in chat format, something that is native to the that the students are used to do but more details contact the recvt you have the add the website address at the bottom and we're there for you all right so thank you very much for coming to continue this discussion you can go back to the après cours website all the information will be up the recording is going to be up as well as the notes that we took in the summary you can also go to vt.proceed.ca and go to the your group tile and you can continue the discussion thread that's going on or add your own. And if you need a hand in uh, vt.proceed.ca, just use the little chat feature at the bottom. It goes straight to my cell phone and I usually answer it pretty quickly, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., okay? <laughs> and if you have a Voc Talk Cafe, let us know. We'd love to set one up uh, if you have an idea. And uh, that's it, contact us. Oh, name, by the way, name, entity, title, email, that's you, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to put it in so this is name entity title email is kelly <laughs> i think we're amateurs we're gonna oh, get fired <laughs> we're terrible anyway <laughs> thanks for coming everyone <laughs>